gloves. What was that? <clears throat> All right, guys, we are live. One second, I just want to make sure I see. I don't see it live. We're not sure we're live. Hmm. I'll refresh again because sometimes that happens. I'm going to show this pain. That's weird. Seems to happen a lot. Give me a second, we're quick. Is it, it's not live? Not yet. I had an error message, hold on. Here we go. It was all prepped, and then it decided it didn't want to work. <laughs> That's happened a few times late in the last. I don't know why it keeps happening like that, but it does. So again, I'm going to share my screen. I know Sammy's on because if she's not, I'm pretty easy on the brush. I know. I'm going to start with the brush anyway because that's so much faster. Still same problem. Yes. Okay. Okay. It looks like it's there. Is it live? Maybe. Yes, we are live. All right, gang. <clears throat> We're live. A couple minutes late. Technical difficulties as usual, but we'll make up for it at the end. Um, I'm going to do a painting of a windmill from Holland. I actually painted this scene, not exactly this scene on location. And I painted a couple of windmills. I thought I'd bring one of my location paintings up and show it to you. This is a, so I've studied the windmills. I've actually done them in person. Um, I decided I thought I'd do a tonal piece with a little snap accent at the end. I'll show you what I mean as we approach that. But what is, what do I mean by tonal? Tonal, basically there's no bright light and shadow. It's primarily what I refer to very often as pattern painting. In other words, I'm painting the pattern of light and dark that I see within the information. And I'm just pointing to all this in here. This is where most of the information is. It's all very close value. Nothing real, particularly really light. It's really lean towards the middle darks to darks. So I'm going to keep that in mind. Now my my accents right now is the water in the sky. Water in the sky. Um, the sky, I'm going to treat, I'm going to actually maybe even deepen it a little bit because I'm going to do a little color snap there at the end. So uh, we're going to start pretty much with a gesso brush and get kind of a approximate sky right in. And I don't, I want it, if anything, just maybe a little bit darker than a way, the way it appears now. So I'm adding some ultramarine white a little bit of ochre and I'm graying it down with just a tint of a warm color. In this case, it's a cat orange. So I'm going to just test this. So that's not as dark as I want, but I'll start with that. Um, I know I'm going to want to go darker. So we're going to want to take that color and just 
this is this is a pretty big canvas or it's actually a piece of uh, uh, what do you call it uh, hardboard so it's not canvas I shouldn't have said that it's a, a 24 by 30 so it's pretty good size so I got to keep my brush scale pretty large here all right and we're just rubbing it down as much as we can I don't want to get too thick right now and I don't want it to be too wet if it's too wet, I'm going to have a hell of a time trying to go back and paint on top of it. And we don't want that. We want it where I, I'm able to go back and paint on top of it. Mix up other colors. They come out different great because if you look at the clouds and the, the kind of overcast color, it's not, it's muddled. So it actually works for you rather than mix up that one perfect color that you might think you, you have. You literally mix up a few, and if I, and I just throw a little extra orange and white into it, and maybe a little bit more orange, just get some variation in this, just so it isn't, you know, it can really get boring if you don't. And it looks like you just painted with a color. So just by adding a little bit, this is nuanced. I don't know how much you can see. I know the screen is, isn't that accurate in terms of, um, giving you all the uh, accurate, particularly when they're close value, close color, which this is, close value, close color. When it's close value, close color, you can see it, um, but very often that's about it. So we're gonna kind of get a little bit of this in here. I'm gonna throw a little more, more blue into it. Ultra, when I say blue, I mean ultramarine. It's the only blue I've really, I actually have a radiant blue out and. I actually put that out before I knew exactly what it was I was going to paint because I really am not going to need that. Um, Lindy wants to know where you got your hardboard. Hi, Lindy. Hardboard? I got my hardboard at either an art supply store or I get it at Home Depot also. Home Depot's got hardboard and you can get, you can actually get four by eight sheets and have it cut down. Or they've got two by uh, four sheets. To get some tones in here that I'm going to be able to work back across. A little bit too dry, so I've added just a touch of turf. You can see how much you now it thins it out, so it doesn't cover the coverage isn't as nice. Uh, but you can see how it it goes on a little bit there. I'm going to add a little bit more white to it, a little bit more orange, a little blue. I don't want it quite as dark, and I I want it even more neutral, right down about here. Right about there. Right. And smear some tones up in here. I, I, coverage. And that's what we're going for right now. Coverage and approximation. Now, we're, please keep in mind, uh, and I, I try and show you guys this every week, uh, the color that I'm using here is kind of a, a dirty light brown green there's white so I like I like you to know that that's and I, I toned a whole bunch of these a while back I get them and tone them and I, I really don't think about I just think about the value and I don't want a bright color occasionally I'll throw a bright color in uh, let's get a little bit of variation in that sky a little bit more white into that color maybe some more ochre and let's see what this is like I'm gonna throw some more ochre into it Just some movement of tones, really, really kind of crucial in the beginning to get some. It isn't so it doesn't become too static of, a, of one color. It's very easy. You say, "Oh, I'm gonna mix up a lot of this color, and I'll just put it in there." Well, you know that's fine and dandy, but at, the, at truthfully, it isn't ideal. And if you notice the kind of way I'm using my brush, I'm purposely coming up with an erratic edge. I don't want. I want it down sometimes up and I can always come back to smooth over it, you know, do a lot of uh, manipulation with it. I'm purposely not making it all what looks almost white here. I don't want it that way because of what I'm going to do later. What's the consistency right now? Consistency is. That's my question. It's not real thick, but it's not runny. Let's put it that way. I've used some turp into it. Uh, I don't want it. Uh, 
real pasty at this point because I want to be able to move it, leave it, move my brush and get some interesting variations. Use your brush different ways, get different effects. Be, think, think like you're being a, a wonderful, exciting, abstract painter when you're doing this. Just kind of have fun. You're not going to mess it up uh, because you're, not, you're always going to go back and readjust anyway. These are not the kind of clouds that have this beautiful cumulus shape. These are more atmospheric and it's more of an overcast kind of a cloud than it is an obvious cloud. It's, a, it's what some people call a cloud cover. So there's a little more orange thrown in there. This is kind of a light color I'm using. Uh, so I can always go back and remix more of that. It's pro probably a little bit too dry, but I don't know. So I'm just, no, it's not. I've totally destroyed my indications of where the, um, the wings of the windmill are, which just means it's, I've got to be a little bit more careful when I go to paint them in because I, I lost the drawing of where I think they belong. But you know what? That could have been wrong too. Goes back to that. You can say it with me if you want, but just paint like you know what you're doing and assume you're wrong. Paint with authority. We want to get enough of the sky kind of approximated in here. Push hard. If I do that all the way across, I get the same edge. I don't want that. So sometimes I'm going to scrape down on it. Sometimes I'm going to come across and then go and scrape up, come down. I'm going to do a lot of little uh, dancing around here, so to speak. And I'm using basically the reference that I see in front of me. It doesn't mean it couldn't change because clouds change. Obviously, they don't pose for, for us, unfortunately. And I'm kind of mixing it in with the color. I got a base color down there, which is kind of nice. And I want it dark enough because I'm going to do a little color snap at the horizon towards the end. So I don't want that to get too light. So I may come back with a little bit more blue and orange into that same uh, color I was using and do a little bit of kind of finessing around here. Just kind of putz around with that color, get it in there. Maybe a little bit more orange. We'll put a little bit more over in here and bring that down a little bit. Bring that down. This is a, just so you know, Holland's a great place to paint. In fact, uh, I think, geez, five or six weeks ago, I think uh, I did an interview with, with Eric uh, Rhodes from Plain Air. And we were yes. talking, we talked a little bit about Holland being such a wonderful uh, place to paint the canals, the boats, the windmills. You got all that stuff going on. And they're the kind of things you don't find elsewhere. And, and the Dutch architecture, the only thing that comes close to it that I have found is the Northern uh, architecture in Belgium, which has a similar characteristic. Dutch architecture is just kind of cool, red tile rubs against uh, green, green uh, fields. Even in, I mean, this was August and you can see how green it is. So next thing let's do, let's get the big masses light in. Like a lot of people say I paint top to bottom. I'm not, I'm painting towards the focal point. So I'm going to set the stage. I'm going to, this is a dark mass and it's green. So it's much different than the color. So right next to that color, I took, I have a sap green and I don't even know if I have enough laid out. And I'm going to add a lot of turf to it. And I'm going to warm it up with a little bit of, or dull it down, you could say, uh, with a little bit of um, asphaltum I have here. I'm going to just take a look at this. You know, that's closer than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I'm going to, I'm pressing this brush down and getting a lot of residue of the sky color out of it, and it's lightening that green just a little bit. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Let's just start with that. So we're going to start up here. We're going to move this across. Don't want it. 
once again, you don't take a lot of time. If the time comes in, uh, you want to save as much time as you guys possibly can for the finessing or the, the control. At this point, you kind of uh, you relinquish control to energy and expression and correct value and color matching, putting it in the, uh, the correct place. But as far as absolute refinement, that's something we reserve for later. So let's go. Let's get this side down. Can I stay out of your way? Get that edge. And just bring some energy down and add some more darks later. Get it. Yeah, it's working. Feels eh, okay. I never know if, it, how, if it's good, if it's bad in the beginning. I'm just kind of assuming and trusting myself, which is probably a good line for me to use for all of you is trust yourself a little bit more, particularly when you're first starting. You know, really do a lot of your evaluating more later on. The only thing you want to evaluate now is pretty much color, value, and shape. And the shape is really not a, not a thing I'm dealing with right now. It's not a problem. I can see it get a little bit more green in the middle. So I might add a little uh, green, a little, what is that? Let's, there we go, it's a little greener. It's a little, it's a little thick and pasty. I threw more turf into it, just so you know, because I'm, I'm using the feeling of the paint. If, the, if I'm fighting the paint too much, meaning if I'm struggling as I put it down, then what I'm doing is I know that I, it paints probably too thick, too dry. And so what I have to do is make that adjustment that you assess it almost immediately and then adjust and continue. And I've used, truthfully, I had a lot of green light out. I've used most of it already. So I'm probably going to be adding a little bit more. So I use two or three different greens that I've mixed up in here, which is fine. I know as I come forward, I see it get warmer. So for the first time, I just threw some alizarin into it. So you can hopefully you can see that's quite a bit warmer. I want it darker too. So I'm going to take the blue and the asphalt. And right at that point, we're going to go a little dark up here, push it out, go out into the water if I need to, a little bit along the edge. Pull it down. Go back to the greens or in between. She secured that to the Camera? The um, board. Okay, we got some. We got kind of some tones down, which is really what I wanted. I want to take that dark again, bring it up in here. It's it's, it's basically just got a little bit of a lizard thrown into it. Which remember, warms come forward. So we're going to do some more indication back in here. It's not going to quite stay like that. Do a little bit of, of grounding as it meets the water. And smear a little bit. If I see a little tonality change, I might as well. I got this color in the brush, use it. Throw some more orange into it. And I could get this faint feeling of probably grasses that have somewhat, I won't say they died, but they're not as green. So anything like that. Any, again, it's much like the sky. We want. We don't want a uniformity to that color because I don't see it. If I really look at that, I don't see it. So I just started off with as much variation as I believe I can get by with. Okay, so now we got, we got a little bit of the design going on. So now we gotta be a little more careful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the trees because they're back behind. We're not gonna make them as light as I would normally make them, but I am not gonna make them as dark as all of this. So I, the color I was using, I just added white to. Just basically added white to it. All right, and I'm gonna test it. You know, that's, that's not bad. You can see, I think it's lighter than this. And there's a little bit of a light edge on the, the plane back here, but I'm gonna start with that because it feels pretty good. And with that, I'm gonna kind of 
just indicate very quickly, I really do not want to spend much time. It's not worth the investment, uh, at, particularly at this time when you know you're going to be painting. Um, and if I were, it, I, I, when I ever refer to time frames, the reason I'm referring to them is not for doing a finished painting. It's really for if you're painting outside. If you're painting outside, your time frame is quite a bit different than if you're painting in your studio. If you're painting in your studio, your time frame is whenever. If you're painting outside, it's usually, in this case, the, if the weather stayed like this, hell, you could paint outside all day. And do a, a little bit of a more finished piece of art if you want. That's personal choice. Has to do with scale. So we're kind of getting those tones back in there. Again, we're getting the feeling. Now, if you look at it and say, well, there's a little light here, there is. And eventually I'll be coming in with a little bit of a light in there. Like uh, I just grabbed some yellow ochre and a little bit of navels, and we'll probably, it's the, the ground plane at this point is behind, so it's probably about in here. So it's, we're probably going to do something like that. And then we'll change it. But that gives me a starting point. Uh, there's some trees that sit behind a house here, so let's get those in. And then let's go to the other side. There's not a lot, but just, oh, I like that edge. Ha, 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 ha. Every now and then you get those things that just work. I want it higher than the architecture. So I'm gonna, as much as I like that edge, I'm gonna do, hopefully do another one that I like. I don't like it as much, but it's not bad. Okay, so we start to get the feel of all the, the trees. Heights. Now, there are buildings back in here. There's architecture. We want to, we want to be a little more accurate than that. So I'm going to set that down. I'm going to pick up, say, a number eight, a flat, one of those rosemaries. A little bit darker than the trees, not much. A little bit darker than the trees. Maybe add a little bit of a, of a blue to that kind of color. Throw a little asphalt in there along with it. And what we want to do is paint the these buildings. The reason I'm using a flat, flat is, are perfect for architecture, you guys. These flats are just, they're made to order for architecture because that is very architectural, that edge. So I, I always use flats for architecture, always. So there's little houses back in there. There's another one picking up from behind back here. And a little tree in front of it. Two over here. And this is the concept of, of tonal painting is that you're painting tones, not necessarily radical colors or radical value changes. You're painting the subtlety of the, of the changes, which is hopefully what I'm doing. A little, little part of a house here. There's a house right there. And the front of it is right there. We'll have to get the roof lines in. A little bit of detail on those houses. Um, a little bit something back in here. Now I've got this nice, slightly darker color mixed up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it. Now, what I'm going to use it for. So as this plane sits behind this plane, it gets a little darker. So I'm going to take that color. I'm just going to bring it right up here. And up a little bit. There we go. And we're going to separate those two planes just by making it. A, that's why we didn't want to go. You know, some people would look at that as really dark. It's not. It's it's a uh, it's darker, but it's really uh, not as dark as it would eventually become. So probably throw a little too much earth tone into it. Um, but it, this is just the beginning of this. You know, this is going to change. Just be aware of that. Okay, so we're starting to get a little. Thing in here. Now we have the base of the windmill, which these are, it's basically a dark blue green color, these bases, but with no bright light on it, you can't tell that. It, it, you see a hint of a green. That's all I can tell you. You see a hint of a green, but it's really 
dark. So it this color is mixed up dark, but it is mixed up with a little with a little greenish blue kind of tint to it. I'm sure it is not obvious on the screen because it is it's really it's almost not obvious and I'm right in front of it. Uh, there's a dark here because from the mill, this water comes out of this little tunnel. So we want to hit that in there, indicate it. We got the houses in, I got the base of the windmill in, and it's going to kind of fuse into that house. I'm just going to fuzz it over there, and it's going to fuse in over here. So we're going to fuzz that color right over to it. Now we're going to come up with the big, you know, let's, let's hold on that. Uh, okay, let's get the rough lines in. I think I think that would probably be important. Now, I could use the eight, but I'd prefer to go to a six or a four, truthfully, um, just because it's smaller. And I still want to keep it, yeah, it's like a three more than there's a four. Uh, the roof, the roofs are warm, but they're dark. So I took the my cat orange hue and I mixed it in to that color. And I'm going to add just a touch of white to it to lighten it. And I'm going to test it. And I think I might be too dark. Nope. Ah. Probably a little too colorful, if anything. Again, those flats really work because you can get those nice, clean architectural edges with them. And there's a roof line, a little darker, but it's right. Back out here. And a little bit of one right there. We'll, we'll overlap it with the tree later. Now, I'm gonna, with the darker of those two colors, I'm going to put these roof lines in. I say roof line, it's actually the, the tile roof. One and two, and then a little bit of a lighter. There's this larger mass up here. It's probably the, the largest warm mass that we see in this piece is this roof, the roof on this specific um, home back here. This is a really cool area, by the way, if you guys, uh, if you ever get to Holland, I highly recommend Edom and uh, Bowling Down. Just different than, you know, the hustle bustle of um, Amsterdam. Because everybody goes to Amsterdam. Cynthia was remembering the day. Huh? Cynthia Hamilton was remembering that day yeah. on location. That was really fun. We had, a, we had a whole group of us. And we were all, we walked across this bridge and painted from an area over there, it was really, it was a lot of fun. There were trucks coming through, a lot of agricultural stuff going on, um, animals, I think uh, there were cows back in here. Cows and sheep everywhere. I don't like to use that brush, I hate to use it. So he asked me, why the heck are you using that brush? You hate to use it, because I got it in my hand. Why well, don't you like it? For what you're trying to do? Yeah. That's fine. For me, it's fine right now. Um, I'm gonna keep moving. Once again, a little bit more of a green. I wanna come in right here. All I did to get more of a green, I kept the brown out of it. Added a little bit more of a ochre and a uh, maple's yellow in there. A little bit there. I see a little bit right about here, right below this house. Oh, there's a neat little fence. I don't, know if I, I don't know if I can make that look work okay, but I'm gonna get a little bit of that ground plane. Just, then it fades away. And a little bit more green. Paint it right in here where it overlaps. All I did is I just took green to the same color, that color I was using. Just 
stick back for just a sec to see how it's going. See a little bit more warmth. So I took the same, co same color, added a little ochre and a little cat orange and threw it right here. So I can see a little bit more color activity. Boy, th th this ground plane I could play with truthfully for hours. Just this area, just playing with nuance of color. I won't, they don't have hours. Um, but, all right, I like, I like what's starting to happen there. So I'm gonna leave it alone. Go back in here. This light edge is too thick. So we're gonna kill it with that same kind of green. And I make some horizontal and some vertical strokes. Not in any order. You just do it because you want that to be kind of erratic. It worked. So I'm gonna, I like it when it works. It doesn't always work. When it works, you got to applaud yourself, you know. You got to pat yourself in the back and say, okay, that's what I thought would happen. And it worked. The more you guys paint, the more you all paint, the more often things will, you will find they'll work because truly for that wonderful word that is too often used, experience. Okay, let's get this mass in right now, all right? Or art, by the way, there's a bunch of little, you guys can't even see at this point, there's, a, there's an activity, a bunch of little houses back in a row, back in here, so one, two, three, four, five, back in space. I don't know why I talked like that. Okay. Let's get the, the base of that um, windmill in. It's warmer and lighter than this. So I can actually mix right next to it. I can actually keep mixing us the same colors all the time if I want because everything is so close in value. So I took the uh, asphalt and added white and I'm now adding a little ultramarine and I'm, I'm mixing this color adjacent to this color on the palette so I can see the difference. All right, I want a little lighter. So I'm gonna throw ochre into it this time. Let's try this, see if it works. That's good enough, huh? Oh, I like a couple edges in there that are really coming out nice. I just have to hope I put it the, at the edge in the right spot, that right there. I did not have to sacrifice that lovely edge for accuracy. Okay. The reason I said okay is I actually stepped back about two feet and got a look at it from a distance. Now, some of you might take note that generally, and this is how I paint my studio, it's how I paint on location. I always have my palette in front of me. Always have my palette in front of me. I never have it off to the side. Why is that? It's two reasons. Number one, I look at it and look right up. I can relate immediately. I don't have to go from here to here. I don't have to go twist somewhere right up. That's one reason. Second reason, second reason, it keeps a distance away from the painting. Uh, I don't want to be right on top of my painting. So it forces me to be a few, you know, a foot away or so where, you know, I, when I was a student, I always felt like I had to be like this. I felt like I had to be like that. Big mistake. As soon as I started standing back, wonderful things started happening. And a lot of times in class, the guys that are in class with me, um, every now and then I'll talk a little bit about posture, uh, painting posture. Painting posture is you don't paint hunched over. You paint with your back kind of straight so that you can, you paint, I don't want, not an arm's length where you're reaching and not all back in here where you're cramped at a comfortable length, at a comfortable length. So you, you should be a nice bend in your arm, uh, I think that's, I think it's more important than most people realize. 
is the posture that you take while you're painting. Oh, nice edge, nice edge. It's starting to feel okay. It looks, it doesn't look quite as symmetrical as I want it, but it's not, it's pretty close. This is almost the same color. Actually, the only thing I did is I mixed a little bit of this kind of color into it. So it went a little darker and it cooled off a little bit. Once again, it's, this is tonal and you probably can't see that kind of variation on the screen. So we've got, this part actually turns. This part actually turns as the wind, it'll follow the wind and the wind will force it to turn. So if the wind is blowing this way and then all of a sudden start shifting this way, it, it actually will turn. A little windmill information. I went to a little place called um, Kinderdike and one of the, uh, one of the husbands, Jim went, uh, he actually took a, a tour inside of one of the windmills while we were painting. So it was really interesting. Okay. So we kind of have things somewhat set. This is the last stuff I'm going to do. It's, this is the most difficult junk to do in the whole darn painting. It really is. Uh, and I'm just saving it for last because then I have an excuse if it doesn't work well, I can say, well, I just ran out of time. Uh, but I would, I would save it for last anyway, no matter what. Now, we want to get this nice reflection, similar to the color that it is, maybe a little bit duller, but right down below it. So it cut, where is it going to go? It's going to go right in here. It's going to go kind of in here. Center of it. Center of it. That helps keeping yourself a center roll. And then the erratic edge, which you almost you almost lose the edge. Every now and then it pulls up. But you just use the same color. Kind of dry. The reason I want to kind of dry is I want to be able to smear paint into it and on top of it. it looks okay. I think I could come this way more. Feels like. And I, I was looking at this thing and I was saying, no, oh, I know if I gave this image to students, they would, they would automatically begin to see these as stripes. Don't paint them that way. It's a reflection just so happens that the water, the wind is blowing the water in such a way it's going boom, boom. And that's why you're getting that kind of, of uh, reading in there. No other reason. Yeah. Well, I got the color mixed in, I'm going to use it. Now, let's get the next thing we got to get in, let's get the water in. And we've got kind of most of the coverage done. We can start worrying about a little bit of what you might call refinement. Or I might call refinement. Okay, so I'm going to clean that brush because it's got a lot of dark color in it. So I'm actually dipping it in the turf squeezing it out. I'm going back to my sky color and I know I still have some of this, the residue of this color into it. Sky color I know is blue, a little bit of the cat orange, maybe a little maples, and white. And those, that's pretty much the mixture. And I want to look at it comparatively and say I want to be kind of similar to the clouds in the sky without being as dark as this. So I'm not, yeah, maybe I'm a little too dark here. Um, and I want the paint to be looser, so I'm adding more turf to it than this is. Because I'm going to be kind of painting into it. I'm going to be kind of getting a lot of dirtiness in my paint. That's good. That's not bad. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up near this and we're going to bring a little bit up there. I'm just going to let it. You have like a lot of paint on your brush. Huh? You have a lot of paint on your brush at this point. Oh, yeah, a lot of paint, not really a lot of paint, but it, it's thin. So I have a lot of turp into it. It's not so thin that it's runny, but as you can see, I'm going to bring this up close. You can see some paint on it. So I can actually 
but the paint is really loose. So you can see there's still thickness to it, but it's definitely not, um, it's not like it's pasty. I don't want it pasty at all right now. So if I'm in the middle, I can just be pretty bold. The minute I get near an edge, I have to be a little bit more sensitive to the character that I'm trying to create. If I can get that character in one stroke without having to come back later, I'm a happy camper. So that's just the gesso brush you're using, right? Yeah. It's the gesso, and part of the reason I'm using this gesso brush is scale. But I mean, I've done eight, I've done five by sevens and use it. So it's got these long flimsy uh, bristles that I can kind of fuss around with and get certain effects if I really push like that. It's not a bad edge, huh? Um, right in here, we want to get the water moves. It kind of comes in. And I know I'm going in and out of, of this dark brown. Sometimes it'll work for me when I pull it out. Sometimes it won't. Let's go there. There's going to be a reflection of the of the blade of the wind mill in there too. This I want to bring up further. Because we want to bring some, I want to bring some foliage across it. That's why I wanted to have it out. And we're going to pull maybe one or two of these across, try and be parallel. feels too striped, then I will change it later. So I have to probably get a little bit more of that. I'm running out of paint. So I threw some more white in, a little touch more blue, just remixing the color. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. Because there's going to be more, more going on in here. It's not just, I'm not done with this at this point. I'm going to try and get a little bit more of the activity that we see going on in there. That'll happen later. Give a nice edge so we get, with this, by doing this, we get the feeling of the reflection of the blades of grass going down. Okay, goes up. These are these are important edges right in here, I think. You can't be too precious with it. You don't want it to be the thing that people stop and go, oh, that cool. You want people to really appreciate it but look past it, look back into this area. So you want it to be feel accurate without being precise. Oh, I like that. What did I just say? Feel accurate without being precise. Write that down so I, please, just so I remember that. Probably have said it before, but. Say that again. <laughs> I want it to feel accurate without being precise. I don't want it to, in other words, if it's precise, I'm gonna count the blades of grass. I'm gonna make sure I have all, everything going on exactly the way it is. That's precision. Um, at this point, I want indication. Okay, so that's, Feels pretty good. I don't like that edge as much. I can probably fix that later, but I got to move on. Uh, I'm going to go back into the houses. Where are we at here? Okay. Close, close to where I'd like to be, but not quite. So I'm going to indicate some of the lighter areas in the house on those houses. It's not as light as the sky. That's going to be too light. Um, so I'm going to add blue and the orange, and that'll give me a nice neutral. I can that'll give me a, kind of a gray. A nice warm gray. This might be, and I'm kind of mixing it kind of in an area near the sky. This might be okay. I'm going to rest my little fingernail down here and use my liner. Feels pretty good. Needs to be a little bit more wet. Accuracy right there. 
seems to be okay. Just kind of step back for a moment to see how that value is sitting. Seems to be okay. That's all I can say. So Lindy was saying, be accurate without being precise. Sounds like spontaneity is important in that saying. Yeah, spontaneity with accuracy. <laughs> okay. You still have to, accuracy counts, you guys. It's not that you, you're not, like, that's why I use, I said, you gotta be accurate. You just don't have to be precise. It's called indicating. Think of it. Think of what you're doing as indication and not, um, not exact depiction. All painting is indication, all, all painting. A little dark, I have a darker and a lighter mixed up in that one area. And I wanna hit, there's a couple of windows in here, but I'm gonna, Smack them in a little too dark, or the uh, the white part of it, and then I'll put the dark of the panes of glass. And they're also I keep glancing up to see if there's more I have to add. And there is. You got, you need enough activity, so it for, at least I do. Some guys will just do it and leave the house alone. If I'm doing a really small painting, I might have just left it. But because this is a 24 by 30, I want to get enough info in. So when someone comes up and looks at it, they actually feel that those are houses. From a distance, you could probably indicate them more abruptly and make them feel like houses. But just looking to see if there's anything. There's a little thing I could add a front, a front to this piece of architecture over here. I'm not sure if you can see that. Maybe. Okay, there is again in the darker version on the base, there's a light area right here. Comes down lower. Comes down about here. And then even darker. And I just when I when I need to mix darker, I'm just going back, grabbing a little of this color and mixing it into that. And I want to hit a couple of I'm gonna broaden the tip of that. See it? So it's like that, but I broaden the tip. And in doing so, I should be able to lay that in. Oh, not bad. And another one right about, not quite center, about here. I didn't get broaden my brush enough. About there. And we got a couple of little windows right here. Right here and right there. All right. Yeah, it's about right. Could be a little brighter on the bottom one. So let's do it one more time, a little bit brighter. Broaden my brush still because I didn't get the shape the way I wanted it. That's a little bit better. That feels better. Okay. There is right below that, right below this. some architectural detail. There's one. Every time I put my finger down, I'm probably picking up paint, so I've got to kind of keep wiping that off. There's two. And I messed up on the first stroke. So I just go back with this dark. Fix it. Okay. Little, boy, little tiny little tidbits of busyness, which keep it from looking like just a flat shape. There is ribbing. The ribbing occurs here and here. It occurs here and here. And all that is is front plane, plane. So it just shows that there is a differentiation in those planes. Um, for that, I'm gonna use a little bit of my mall stick here. And I'm just gonna kind of come in right about here, looks like, put it in there and just let it fade. And we'll do the same on the other side. 
put it in there. Whoops, I messed up a little bit. Most like slipped, but they, it doesn't bother me. So they're a little stronger than I want, so I may want to wipe them out a little later. But the same color, that same color, I'm going to, as carefully as I can, add the differentiation of the top notch and the base. We'll do it once and do it twice. Okay, that's starting to shape up. Uh, let's keep the detail on those houses over on this side, the front of these two. I have to look here. There we go. There. Like that. And, and then there's little windows there too. There. A little bit of a window back here. Showing a little bit of the side of that. Darker window in front, almost where it's the same value. And again, when I want to do these windows, I want to get my brush kind of flat like that. And there's three windows there. There's one, a little lighter, it's too dark. One, two, three. And then we've got the house to the left of it. And we want to get These are just drawing marks. You got now there's a truck there. I'm not going to put the truck in. Hope that doesn't disappoint too many of you. But there is something white back behind that truck. It's probably a trailer, and I'm going to put it there. I'm just going to put a white something right here. I'll explain to you why in a second. Uh, house is back behind this house. That's, there's a little just to distinguish a little bit of, that's a kind of how you see it too. It's just, you don't even really realize. It's just, it's busyness. A uh, little light detail on this house. I wipe my finger again. This is the tedious part of painting. This is that control that I so often kind of refer to that you get, need to bring control. And there's three windows with darks and the windows set one, two, three. And there's probably a window here, like there was in the other one, right there, and right there. And there's probably, even though I don't see it here, and we can't see what's going. Oh, there's a bush in front of that house. There is a window that's being hid back here, I can see. Probably one up in here. Okay, we're just putting it there because I think it's there. Uh, one more thing I want to do the windows, then we're pretty much going to try and be done with those houses. I want to put the little dark snaps. So I went back to my dark colors. And we're going to go to each window that I, where I begin to see it. I'm going to put them there. Not dark enough. I do it. I had too much light in my, on my paintbrush. Now let's try it again. One, two, Way too dark. You stand back. Yeah, it's too dark, but I'm going to leave it for right now. Don't have time. Little top notches and chimneys. Got it. Otherwise, otherwise you paint them, they look like toys. I got some, but put my finger down, mess that up, mess that up, but that can work for us still. Um,
little bit of a shrub, a little bit of a lighter shrub. Whoops, a little more green into that. Got a little red on me. Well, it really doesn't matter. Green comes out here and here. Okay, not bad. The last piece of house info right here and a window right there and that kind of finishes the feeling of the architecture not that i couldn't go back and do more to it i really could so in that same vein sorry about the tripod shaking in that same vein I need to put in, there's a little fence, and I know what that fence is for. It, this, this little fence right here, and it's where the water comes out. So we're gonna find it, and we're gonna put one post right there, and one right there, and the third one equally right there. And then the cross members, two of them, and I'll use, my mall stick here, just so I can get them kind of straight. One, pick up more paint, and one below it. Two. Okay. Ah, get more paint on, and go back and reinforce this little area right here. So, little architectural detail. I don't know what it is right there there is a dark this is i'm adding all this stuff now the stuff i'm i'm, I'm killing time because i know i'm going to dread this um there is a little fence right here that's why i put that little light spot back there one probably a little too dark but if i merge it into the house it'll work fine Okay, I think we need a little top notch there. Let me see if I need anything. Yeah, I see some. Okay, we need to really work on the reflection. Now, I'm gonna pull this stick out and I'm looking how far it comes out, about here. Pop. Puff. Now the hard part isn't that, the hard part is that. Because look how thin it is. Now I can do it a lot of different ways. Um, I'm gonna do it with a brush and cross my fingers that I get it right. And if I don't, I just take the sky and whittle it away until it becomes. But what I'm gonna do is get my point so that it's like needles. And I'm gonna find that angle right there looks to be about the correct angle. And truthfully, it's not gonna matter if it's not. But what I wanna do is just very lightly That's it. So it's there, but it's not. Uh, I actually picked up some light, messed up this a little bit more of a tree right in here. All right. Um, I need to see if there's any more. Oh, I like those, I like the little linear snaps. There's a couple of light posts. I'm going to put them in here. One is one goes back this way. I'm not sure they'll be able to see that. One. Maybe. One goes right about here. And whether it's in the right spot or not, doesn't matter. It goes up higher though, so let's take it up higher. Okay, just linear, look at, look at that. Oh, I hate that. Um, I'm just gonna take my rag, take a brush, but I'm just gonna rag and wipe it. So you can get, all these cool cloud effects too with this, with this rag. You don't have to just use your brush. Of course, when I did that, the bottom of the brush hit here. So we just kind of get rid of it. Stuff happens uh, when we all paint. Are we having fun yet? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to try and get these things in. I'm just I'm thinking. So every now and then I think while I paint. 
little things I say that I just noticed a little bit more activity between the group of trees and the ground plane there would help. I could see a little bit more happening in here too, uh, a little bit more dif differentiation. We will hopefully we'll, we'll get to that. So I'm going to do what I hate to do right now. You get to watch me do the part. It's like, I'll tell you, one of the things that I'm terrible at is lettering. This is like lettering because the accuracy is very, is, is very thin and refined. So the first thing I want to do is I kind of still have a mark there. So I want to find the top of that. The top of it is about here. And the angle of it continues all the way down to right in here. And it crosses about this point. So I'm going to see if I can set my mall stick. Didn't mean to do that. Um, at those two points. So I can go from one to the other. Have that nice dark mixed up. Get enough paint on your brush. Boy, down here, I gotta pull my mall stick up a little bit because it's just this is where I hate. I'm gonna just press my finger. There we go. I think we've got it. But I got a couple bumps in the way I can see. I can do it again. I mean I could try I could do it freehand poorly. So we're gonna take it down, bring it all the way down, keep going. I'm pressing as I go down. Did you have to hold your breath? Maybe? Yeah. <laughs> I hate doing that. That's not how I paint. You guys have seen me paint enough to know that this is a, but you gotta use all your tricks and all your knowledge for different forms of subject matter. Now the next thing I wanna do is this point is about there. Sound effects too. Yeah. And this point, it's the same distance. It's actually foreshortened. So whatever that distance is to here is going to be shorter on this side. So it's probably going to be eh, more like here. I'm guessing. Uh, of course I'm guessing. We're going to do find those two points. And we're going to try and do the same thing here. Except this time, it already has a longer line. I've only got to get it into this. Then we lose it. Comes back out here. And comes back down to that point. All right? So we've got the axis of uh, what we're going to paint. Now I'm going to do a little bit of, of careful uh, painting. Because at this point, I didn't get it, the thickness down. But it goes all the way down and gets really thick right in here. All right. And the blade gets really wide right here and right here and right here, up a little higher. And we don't see it, but the, the blade here, we see it here. And then it goes back. So what I'm going to do, once I get those in there, again, if I, if I use a mall stick, I can be a little bit more accurate. But we're just going to kind of hit it like that. And then we're going to hit press with the thickness of the brush. I went too far with it. It's OK. That's just a matter of coming in with that sky color. Now, this one's a little more tricky because it's thin at the top and it's thick at the bottom. So it's thin. And as it comes down, it gets thicker. And all I do is just press on that brush more. And we got the thickness. Maybe not quite what I want, but close. Same is true here. It goes thick. It looks like it's kind of thick almost all the way down. So let's, let's just take it from here and bring it all the way down. And fill in one more time. I like a little bit of loose in the center. So I don't mind it. I did, you know, I want it to be accurate, and this is maybe a little more precise than I want. I may want to loosen it up at the end. But I'm going to take this bottom one and at least indicate that spot here. Real thin now. These are not those thick. He's very thin. I want to bring it out. Leave it at that. 
It's not quite what I wanted, but I don't care because I want it to feel like a painting. I don't care if it's a, if it's a little muffed up. Okay, one there that comes out further, comes out all the way to here. Okay. And up here, we'll do the same thing. And it curves up a little bit, so we're gonna make it go that way. And it goes a little bit out, probably about here. So a lot of this is guesswork. Yeah, you, you, you use your knowledge of perspective. Um, this I'm probably gonna do more freehand. It's gonna, cause it curves a little bit. It's gonna come from here. It's a little thicker than I want. And that it straightens out. I might straighten it out a little bit right here. And if I lose it, it's okay. If we don't see it everywhere, it's not terrible. We really don't see it down here. Now there's two more in here. So there, one's gonna be about here. And one's gonna be about in here. Okay. We just indicate them. In here, I'm doing them freehand. Get rid of that dirt on my, and we get a couple of very thin, told you I hate this. You need it, and if it looks too precise, what I'm gonna do is smear it. And then we've got two in here, so I'm gonna do that. Same kind of thing. One, two, just leave it alone. So it's already starting to feel kind of correct. At this point, I'm going to set that mall stick down, clean my finger. <laughs> my mom could always keep my hands clean, by the way. And then I became a painter. And that kind of went out the door. I'm quiet because I'm concentrating. It's hard for me to talk and do accuracy. I just realized that. I can talk and do a lot of stuff, but I cannot talk and do accuracy. So what I just got through telling you is every painting you've seen me do is relatively inaccurate. Because I, I talk a lot. Okay, so we're gonna hit, I'm gonna try and clean that brush up. This is where these liners come in handy. And we're just gonna kind of move on down the line. Too thick. Try it again. That yeah, feels okay. Not as good as I want it to be, but you know, makers can't be choosers. Come on. My my bristles are separating and giving me multiple lines, and I kind of don't want them at this stage. Okay, kind of go work our way back here. One, two. Work, get that tip. That looks like a good tip finally. Let's, let's say one, two. I like the lightness of it, at least of that tone. It's a clumsy stroke. I'll clean up a couple of those a little bit lighter. And there's a little bit going on in here too. Actually, you know what I need to do is I need to take and bring this out a little bit further on that side. And there is some activity in there. Uh, there's also a piece right here. And I picked up, you can see, where it was sky color. Yeah, it got in the way. Okay, so that's starting to shape up pretty good. So I'm starting to get some of the feel that I want there. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go back into the water. I wanna get water feel, and I'm gonna do a little accent. And hopefully the accent is really gonna make it look good. Right now it's kind of dull. Uh, very often a tonal painting can be, if you don't snap something in it, it can be quite dull. Um, you got to give it some sort of interest. I wanted to get rid of that stroke because I didn't like it. And I get, you can hit, if some of these feel a little too clumsy, just go back and hit some negatives. 
you know, loosen it up a little bit. You can kind of go back in here, hit one. Hit. So, because if some of, some of these get lost, it's perfectly all right. It'll make it feel more like a painting. So you can hit hit a few negatives. Put a negative right in there. I think I got to clean that up here. Hit a negative here. It's you can kind of feel where you need them. And if you overdo it, you go back and hit a positive or two. So you know it goes back to that old thing that I like to say is your paintings are never wrong. They're just unfinished. So if if it isn't working, go back and re redo it. Okay, so it's starting to feel feel correct. I want to be a little more accurate as we move into the water. Um, I see on this side of the oh, there's a little. I actually see some info. If you were here on on site, you would see more. But there actually is a little gate right here and there and there. We're all saying that linear elements are always so tricky in oil painting, getting them to feel painterly yet accurate. Boy, was, who said that? Laurel. I wonder how. You know, she's all right. You, that's someone who's experienced it. <laughs> you're absolutely, you're a hundred percent correct. Because you don't want it to feel like you did it. Um, everything's been done. Oh, what's the word? Where it's it's too. Nicole. Too architectural, like an architectural rendering. Where an architectural rendering, everything is correct. And every, you want it to feel like a piece of art. So you have to keep true to the feeling of art and still maintain that accuracy. And that's kind of what I said at the beginning when I brought that whole thing up about uh, you want to be accurate, but not precise. So I brought this up earlier. We have a reflection right here of, and first thing I want to do is fix this. I didn't like the edge on that at all. And now I want to get Okay, I'll start again. I gotta look to see where it ends. Okay, it comes down about, I gotcha. It comes down about here. Then we start to get little pieces of it. That starts to work. Okay, I don't know what that is. I'm not gonna put it in because it feels um, like it's kind of jarring. Now I want to get some of the dark sound in here. I, I mentioned earlier, I knew I was going to revisit uh, this foreground. So we're going to put some of the, remember what I said in the outset, there is modeling. It's that any modeling is so subtle, you can still be very realistic with this, with, with a, uh, an approach, a tonal approach, or you can be extremely expressionistic. Well, much the same as you can with almost any any form. It really comes down to what you want to do. And I, I had a plan in mind, and you'll see it hopefully come together. Oh, God, I hope it works. And if it doesn't, I will uh, hide my head in shame. Uh, one of the things I want to do right now is get some nice dark and start to bring some of this foliage in. Uh, I keep picking up the white water, so I have to kind of go back in, fuss around a little bit, dance here, back here and there, and we'll get the we'll get those tones back in there. I think I'm going to use a different brush because I think that's what's messing me up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna I need a, a soft brush, so I really need something more like a sable. Um, an apert might work. That apert is. Gotta clean that off. That's a crappy egg. Um, this I also like to use if I have them. Here's a brush that works sometimes. Fan. It's a sable fan. So, <laughs> so
So it's like I said, it's a disabled fan. Uh, I crack myself up. Okay. Oh, I like that stroke. There's energy and a degree of control at the same time. I'm going to do something more right here. Just going to lift it up on the lip so that I'm not bumping that lip as I go down. Now, what happens is every time I pass over the um, water, I am picking up a little bit of, of the, uh, the light color. So I'm good for a few, a few strokes, but not tremendous amount. Sometimes I have to go back. And then I'll bring a little bit of accuracy, a little bit more control to it towards the end. I forgot about my little fan brush. I don't use it often enough. I should do all kinds of fun stuff with it. And I know some people that just paint with a fan almost exclusively. Now, what, I'll show you something I like to do here. So, and I see it so I can do a little bit of it. Uh, there's a couple things. Number one, I'm going to take this uh, uh, kind of number two flat, three flat, I think it is. It's kind of, it's a synthetic sable. It's a, it's a cheap little brush, but it works great for certain things. And there is a platform that comes from here down. And there's a gate right there. And there is a little light area behind it. So I'm going to make kind of a, a, a little bit of a lighter green back here. And there's a fence, which is dark, little linear snaps. And I see I could turn that into a white fence too. I just realized that I really wanted to and not put the light behind it. And it comes down here. And I'll put a fence on the other side, what do you say? So Chuck had a question. Uh, what's the advantage of using the fan brush on the grass rather than a linear? I mean, loved how you did that. What, here? Yeah. Two things, number one, you see the bristles? So if I really scrub it and push down, I separate those bristles, they'll each, group of bristles will create a frond. Uh, and so that, and then you bring it, if you take it sideways this way, you can be more thin and accurate with it. So that's truly the advantage. Now I wanna get some of the striations across without being too, uh, so I'm just taking a little bit of the brown, mixing it back into the sky, but keep my eye on the time. I do wanna finish this off with a little snap. So I don't like, I like, want these to be more there. So we're starting to get a little bit of the, the ripple quality of that. And I can come in, I can probably lighten up this edge a little bit. I'm going to do that. So with my green, and now that I'm using the fan, I can get a different kind of character. That's the one I have. Wow. We don't get planes over it. Look what that is. Ah, oh, they're bringing the vaccine. That's it. Okay. I'm kind of waiting for it though, guys, to see how. You say I like it too much, but watch. Go right over it. Just bring a little bit more green into it. 
do it. So give it. I don't want too much light here. I mean, I don't want too much color variation. Um, it's going to destroy the whole the whole tonal effect. And that feels a little flat now. So I'll just pick up one of the darker tones that I have with green already mixed into it. Maybe throw a little orange into it, but and a little bit more. And let's kind of tone that in. Like I said, I'm just having fun with the fan. Haven't haven't uh, mess with the fan enough. So a little burnt sienna. Why not? Let's try it. Okay, I'm going to take, go back to my um, little liner and go back with the sky color. And I'm actually going to distinguish now a few little negatives. You don't want to overdo it. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Constantly doing that. Put it in, take it out. Put it in, take it out. That's literally um, should almost be your mantra when you're when you're doing this kind of painting. If it doesn't work, get it out of there. If it works, keep it in. And then you need that evaluation time. So I'm going to take that basic sky color, the first watercolor that I was using. Uh, I've been, I wasn't going to use this brush, but what the hell, I'm going to do it. Um, and I'm going to find this as it goes back in space. And I actually see it right about in here. So there's, we get, I call that continuity. Now, when I put that in there, generally, what I end up having to do is overlap a little bit. Whoops. Still have that. There we go. Go back to the greens and just do a little bit of. So it isn't sitting on top. So now it feels like it's behind. And, you know, if uh, sometimes I like to, I'm going to find it right about in here too, I think. So we feel that water kind of going back in space. I could do it back in here, but I don't think I want to because I don't want to call too much attention over there. So I'm literally looking at all this. Okay, I've got. We started five minutes late, so I've got what five, oh, ten minutes. What do you say? Ten minutes sounds okay. I can I can live with that. Um, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do my little color snap right now and make this thing a little bit more exciting to look at. So uh, really, the question: the little negatives uh, is what you were suggesting for the windmill fans too, right? Yeah. Yes. If it starts feeling too contrived, like you drew it on, go back and hit negatives. Uh, I do the same when I do lettering. If I'm doing lettering, say on a building or something, and I get it to where it's it's uh, too clear, too defined, and I will go back and I'll start doing more negatives. I'm looking for a certain kind of brush and I can't find it, so I'm gonna. You know, I like to use a. Let's try this. It's a little thicker than I want. Um, what are you looking for? I don't know. <laughs> That's the one I'm going to use. Though. Steve uh, says you're painting yeah. like a Dutch master today. I do. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why I love Steve Gray to be on with me <laughs> because I need a little bit of that. Uh, and that comes, I know that comes from his, his phenomenal cartoon uh, imagination. Okay, Naples yellow, white. Solvent-free gel, a little bit of Naples. What are we gonna do with it? I, this is, I, I call it a trick. Uh, this is something I learned studying Howard Pyle. Great, great illustrator, great illustrator. I'm kicking the, because if I kick it enough, <laughs> what'll happen is it'll look, and we're gonna put, look at that little piece of light, skylight coming through right in that. So if the, there is an end to this overcast, right? And that's the end. So what we're going to do, we're going to take that. And use that. It helps define that. 
Oh, I like that. Okay, let's keep going. I really probably need to bring that up more. And I don't want that edge to be too sharp. Right? So I'm going to take, clean my finger, a little snap there, maybe right there, huh? And you know what? Maybe it breaks through another spot. I feel so like Bob Ross here. You're exaggerating a little bit of the. Exaggerating? I'm making it up. <laughs> this isn't even exaggerating. This is just saying, and what I'm what I'm doing is I'm imagining that this is a big cloud front, and there's sunlight out. At the end of it. You can see the sky is maybe illuminated. It's all beautiful, bright and yellow because of the sun back in there. But up where we are, it's still co covered in clouds. But you can use this as a little accent. I've done it quite often. Uh, I, like I said, I call it a trick. It's something that I, uh, it was a wonderful Howard Pyle, Pyle painting of a bunch of people cowering from a, a wolf and I noticed Right on the horizon, everything is all gray. And right on the horizon, he's got this gleaming, bright light coming through. And I went, and I knew it wasn't there. I mean, it's you're making it up. You know, fool me once, fool me twice. Well, it helps to find the, the structures. It the helps to find the structures. It also gives you a focal point. Mm -hmm. it, it pulls you right back into that space. Uh, now. Is any of it in the water? Maybe a little bit might be right in here, but not really because it's too far up. So you might have a little bit, and I, I try, this is where I just try it. Maybe right there, that's about it. But we wanna go across. And am I gonna go all the way across? I, you know, I hadn't thought about it. Maybe, maybe not, maybe I'll go there. Maybe there's still some clouds and we pick it up again back in here. And it fades. I'm not, not going to take it all. I was going to take it all the way across. I don't think I am. I don't like it. I don't like this because it's lining up. So I want to bring it above the roof line. I wouldn't do it with this little brush. It tends to work. Yeah, that, that works okay. That's starting to work. Uh, now you give a little bit more care to the trees. Not quite as bright in here, I don't want to. This is just sky color. It's not, it's the cloud color. So I might, you know, if I were. I think I mentioned it. If I were doing this, I might actually go back and really work the hell out of those clouds and just get a lot more interesting variations in there. Uh, here's some more orange, for example. I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm going to try it right about in here. I kind of like that. It kind of takes it from being too flat. The only thing I don't like is it's the same shape as that. So let's broaden this, let's bring it up a little higher and let it get lost in here. It's just, it's, just, it's delightful when you turn on the lights. That's what I'm doing. It's, de oh, oh I, I didn't get it at first. It's delightful, got it. Buddy Chris Butler here with all his puns. <laughs> okay, what's what's he saying now? <laughs> this is Chuck. Okay, Chuck oh Chuck, okay. Chuck There's my other pun. Great. There's my other pun, buddy. 
This is great effects. So we've gone from precise, but not too accurate to exaggerating. I'm making it up. Brilliant work, Craig. Yep. Use a little <laughs> bit of everything in your check. Use a little bit of making up, use a little bit of exaggerating. And then you got to be wrong a few times too. Like one of my uh, wonderful teachers who I've, I've referred to over and over again, and anybody that had him, you were as fortunate as I was, Don Putman, uh, used to say, <laughs> for him, what is beautiful about a painting is not always what's right with the painting. Sometimes it's what's wrong with the painting. That's profound. You're gonna have to, you'll wake up at three in the morning and go, what? what? Say that one more time. What is wonderful about paintings is not always what's right about the painting. Sometimes it's what's wrong about the painting. Okay. okay. I still am not sure I get that. Yeah. But I kind of understand that sometimes uh, if everything is too precise and too perfect, uh, you, you lose the beauty of the fact that you're painting and you're worried more about the image than you are about the paint. That's my philosophy based on what Don said, what Putt said. I like there to be a balance between the beauty of the paint and the subject. And it's, it's a constant struggle for me to, to get both of those going at a very comfortable um, marriage, I, I guess is, is, would be the right word. Let's see if there's anything I want to do up in here. You know, I get a little bit interesting. A touch of reflected light. Uh, I'm going to clean my finger now. Right down. It looks like Chuck and Laurel were on the same page here. They both said imperfections are human. <laughs> what was that? Imperfections are human. Maybe that's it. Human part of creating. Maybe that's it. Because you don't want to look like a machine. You don't want your paintings to look like it was done so perfectly. Uh, you know, that's why there were artists and illustrators I know that worked on top of the, on top of photographs. I could never do that. Uh, number one, it just wasn't in my DNA to do that. But secondly, I like. I, I, there's a hand quality that has beauty to it. It just has an incredible amount of beauty. And uh, I just believe that the more you can achieve that and still create the image that you're after, um, the more satisfied, and I, I can only speak for myself, the more satisfied I am. And one other thing, another Don Putnam quote, uh, it was written about him. It wasn't it? Was I read it in, in an article, and it was, "Put paints to please himself, and the pleasure is contagious." Mm -hmm. But that was very nicely stated, and I think that's what we all are after in our own paintings. Is we paint to please ourselves, and we hope that other people enjoy the results. Here you may not enjoy the results, but hopefully you enjoy the process, the, the making of the art. We got, a, we got a piece that's kind of almost working. And I'm gonna do one last thing that I, and I, as I just stood back that I could feel, I squeeze a little bit more green out. Took my big gesso brush mixed a little bit of ochre. I'm gonna see some, ah, there we go. I wanna get a little bit more greens going on in here. Like I said, this is one area of the painting. I know for a fact that if I were gonna really refine and carry this to a happy, that areas like this, which I, this could absolutely go darker Let's do that right at the end. What do you say? And then we'll call it quits. Uh, and working colors and nuances into this tone. But I just said, let's do that. So let's do that. And then we'll call it quits. Blue, white, ochre, orange. Sounds like a chair, doesn't it? 
but nothing rhymes with orange. <laughs> so, okay, let's let's see what how this works. No, nope, I thought I had it dark enough. Try it one more time. This will this should work. Actually, let's throw a little a lizard right into that. Okay. Into that. There we go. You can get a lot more. I just realized that it's coming closer to us, and it could be a lot darker since this is all dark down here. So I could probably even cheat that even more if I wanted to. Let me stand back. That's a lot better it was. Um, I have to mess that up a little bit so I can't really tell it. I don't want to have to do that again, man. That was yeah. I didn't like doing it the first time. It's for a little more dramatic sky there. They have beautiful skies, beautiful clouds and pond. It just yeah. You make them more beautiful. Hopefully. That's that's the goal. The goal is to for your painting to look better than the image that you're painting. Because you're using your interpretation of, and it, yeah, it's not that it couldn't look like this, truthfully. It's not that it couldn't look like this at all. It's just that, it, you know, who knows, 10 minutes ago, it might look like this. Uh, skies keep changing, clouds keep changing. So if you want to practice clouds, just practice them all the time and you kind of get, you get, I, hate, I don't like to use this word too much, but you get kind of a formula down that begins to work for you. And you can depict, you can add things in, and as they change, you can move things around. But that sky looks a lot better than it did 10 minutes ago. That's in my opinion. Um, I said that was it. So I think we're gonna, I'm get, I can tell at a particular time, I start to get hungry. Now, one thing I do wanna mention, Next Friday, if you haven't realized, is Christmas. And rather than do a demo on Christmas, Anne and I talked earlier. She agreed to it because I have to have her agree. And I can't do this by myself. Did I? Okay. Yes, you did. I think you did, did you? That we would do a Thursday. So for those of you that want Christmas Eve on Thursday at noon, we're going to do one of these things and maybe do a relative, if there's such a thing, Christmas thing. Um, I don't know, maybe it'll end up being a snow scene or something. I uh, haven't decided. Oh, I like that. It's kind of nice. Little things, you try things. If you like them, you keep them. If you don't like them, you get rid of them. That's it. I know I said it earlier, but I really mean it. I'm going to leave it. Okay. To clean, uh, probably I'll, you know, off camera, I'll clean up a little bit of the architecture. Um, but basically, hopefully that gives you guys, let me pull my glasses off, that pull, that gives you guys an idea how to try and take something and make it maybe a little bit better. You know, as I'm standing here right now, those reds are just too strong for me, but that's me. Okay, I'll go up. Happy painting, we'll see you next Thursday. Stay safe and healthy, everybody. Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas. Thanks, Judy, for your help. Yeah. Thank you, Judy. Have a nice Christmas. Yeah, you guys too. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop the live stream on Facebook. Thank you. Bye. Bye.